What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Sheehan Show. Me, Sean Sheehan, here on Sherdog.com, and I am back with my top five bets for the week in the world of mixed martial arts. And we have two big cards this week, which I'm going to concentrate on, uh, namely the uh, PFL uh, return uh, for their semi-final fights, which goes on on uh, August 2nd, the PFL 7 card, over in uh, Nashville. And then also the UFC on ABC 7, August 3rd, in Abu Dhabi. Uh, and it's a pretty good card, honestly. Uh, in both of them, the UFC card obviously is a as a non pay per view card. Probably sticks out. It's one of the the two or three a year that are are extremely good. Um, and the the BFL when they come to this stage of this, the the year, you know, it all matters. It all matters all year in the PFL. But uh, you know, you're you're a fight and a half away from a million. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, so we will uh, get into all of that, and I will give you my bets for all of uh, those as well. So, um, we can uh, start off here, I suppose, by looking back at uh, at last week and uh, the bets that we had for uh, for then, and and see how uh, how well they went as as we uh, as we always t- tend to do. So the first bet from last week was uh, Leon Edwards inside the distance, which uh, obviously, as we know, didn't uh, didn't end up hitting, um, and. Uh, it was look. It was one of those bets that coming into it, I felt good about. I, you know, I thought uh, Leon was was much better in that first fight, um, and I thought that coming into the second fight, it would be um, a case of being even better again and being even more dominant. But he, he just, you know, he just wasn't. Um, and look, that's the way it goes. Um, Bilal came out and he put on a great performance. Leon was a bit flat. I think most people would would agree with both of those um, uh, pieces of analysis. Um, so yeah, that didn't hit. But the other three bets uh, on the week hit. Aspinall wins by TKO. Obviously, he did that very quickly at minus one thirty. I think that price was uh, you know probably a bit too too good. And if you got that one, I'd say you're probably happy uh, on uh, on Sunday morning or Monday morning, whatever it is after you see the fights. And uh, then Paddy Pinman a plus one off five. Again, I think that was a great bet, especially in retrospect. No, I know Paddy was said it himself, like oh people will be writing Bobby off and all afterwards. But I was kind of saying it beforehand. You know, when you take away all the, the biases or the opinions on Paddy as a person or, you know, him as a certain fi- a fighter in a certain way, as we talked about last week, Paddy's a very good athlete and he's very good on the ground. And, you know, Bobby's not exactly the biggest knockout artist in the world. Now, it went a lot easier than most people would have expected, even if you're picking Paddy, as I did, and as it, you know, went uh, better, even easier than I thought as well. But. It, it, it went, and we got it at plus uh, 105. Sean Abana, minus 180. Um, I actually think Alice Ar- Ardlin uh, put on a better showing than I was expecting, to be honest, and she looked, uh, I wouldn't say she looked amazing, but for a young fighter who has never really uh, been, uh, okay, she fought Zhang Weili, but aside from that, you know, she's been fighting, um, you know, it's kind of social media fights over the last while rather than real fights, but she came out and she uh, fought well. And I think Shauna Bannon fought well as well. You know, a lot of people, it's very easy to criticize someone like Shauna when she's, you know, six fights into her MMA career. She made her debut in 2022. You know, look how good Bruna Brazil looked. And Shauna won a round off her uh, in, in her debut when she, you know, very much felt the UFC jitters in the first two rounds. So I think you know, here a little bit of Irish bias here, obviously, but I think give Sean a little bit of credit and judge her maybe in five or six fights rather than judging her now when she's only, you know, six, seven fights into her career. And then, um, so yeah, three out of four in the main bets and then in the flyer, it didn't hit Michelle Pijani uh, plus 300, but anyone who watched that fight, um, I think they were probably looking at plus 300 after round one and thinking, how did I get such a good price in this fight? But, uh, you know, it kind of turned... And uh, from the start of round two, um, he stopped fighting his fight and fight, started fighting Mason Jones' fight, and it went all downhill from there. So there you go. Right. You probably saw me messing with my phone. The reason I was doing that was I promised to pull up some of the uh, your bets from the comment section last week, and I'll do it next week as well. So um, Marcus had uh, Mama B and Patterson, the best bets, minus 400 for Patterson, minus 200 for Bannon Approximately. Both of those hit, yeah, so if you put on that double... What would you got there? Maybe even money, maybe a little bit less. So very good for Marcus there. Um, um, I saw there was a few people actually picking out Bilal, uh, which was interesting. I think Lucid was one of them as well. Um, and we'd match you going. Uh, I knew an Aspinall KO on rounds one to three, which was a great bet at minus one thirty-five. Um, 
and he also said um, he put had a twenty five bonus bed, and was buying the extra rounds to wear blades, ga- blades, blades, gases. So that's fair. And then uh, Green and Edward straight bets, well, which didn't hit uh, there as well. So, uh, yeah, interesting. And um, Marcus also pointed out to me that I said. Bilal was winning the first fight when I meant uh, Leon, so yeah, there you go. But yeah, as I said, some good bets there. Leave your bets for this upcoming week in the comment section below, and uh, I will read them out next week if I remember it, which I forgot this week, and I just pulled it up. <laughs> but I, hopefully, hopefully we, we can do that and make it a reoccurring team. So uh, the more bets down below, the more I remember them. So leave your bets for next week down below, and we will talk about them next week. Okay. Um, right. So we have four bets and in the flyer, and... My first bet is, uh, you know, we, we talked about it a, a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, look, I want to kind of throw out bets there and get you thinking about it. And then last week, you know, someone made the comment kind of like, I ah, know, give us winners to mind that. I'm I'm doing a bit of both here right now. I am, I've said it from the start of the year that I'm throwing out good prices here and want to look for good prices. And I do that with all my bets. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not that worried about my, my record. No, I I'm, should update you as well. My record is 58 of 115 so uh we're just over the 50 percent there which i'm happy enough with i think that's where we were going last last year as well don't ask about the flyers we we won you know we've only hit two flyers so far we won't we won't talk about that um but i'm more concerned with like could we get a plus 200 could we get a plus you know an even money bet that is you know better than it should be i want to i want to kind of pull out prices that maybe you know um are, are off a little bit and the one i'm going for the first bet of the week i'm going for Corey sandhagen at plus 265 now again right straight up if you're to give me plus 100 against plus 100 who would i pick i'm actually a little bit torn and i'll get into it here in a second i'm torn would i lean umar would i lean Corey? i'm i'm again torn I might lean umar right if you were to ask me today i might lean umar if you ask me tomorrow i might lean Corey. When you're going plus two six five for Corey, and let me just uh, let me just check the price of Umar while I'm here. Umar's minus tr- look best price minus three hundred best price minus three four five. I'm looking at him here in one pass. That is that's just too much. I really think that's too much. And I think I know I know I was actually speaking to there's um, a long time listener of the show who's does a lot of bets and stuff and he's very, very, very successful in these bets and he reckons Umar is gonna win this fight. And I've actually like no problem with that. When you look at a guy who's seventeen and oh with nine finishes and you know he's beaten some good guys along the way, he's never fought anyone on the level of of Corey. But that that's still, right? If if you get to that, you've shown your quality, there's I've no problem with you picking him. But is there anyone out there that truly believes that this is a minus, what, what did I say, a minus three, four, five fight? Now, in retrospect, you know, if he goes on and wins it, and then goes on and wins the title and stuff, maybe we could look back. But even then, you look at Corey Sandhagen. Like, you look at his record over the last while, 17 and 4, 10 finishes in there. You know, he's won his last three fights in a row. The only fa- fights he's lost, uh, you know, in, in the UFC in the last, you know, ever in the UFC are to... All the champions, better Yan, TJ, Dillashaw, and uh, and Sterling, and you know, a split decision to Dillashaw, a decision against Yan as well, and obviously the Sterling fight. We know a fight we know ended very very quickly in, in Sterling's pomp, but you know, he I suppose you could say the same about Sandhagen in a way. He hasn't beaten the level, but he has, you know, beaten Song Yudong like that. Uh, Cheetah, a bit of a different one, not not the greatest fight, but beating Rob Font as well. You know, Frank Yeager again, different one. Frankie was his f- career was kind of uh, over at that stage. You know, I, I, it's it's hard to argue that Sandhagen isn't more proven, right? But that that doesn't really matter, right? At one stage, John Jones wasn't proven. You know, Habib wasn't proven. All that 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 doesn't. Re- I never really buy into that, right? But at the same time, what to to, to go to the point I made earlier, right? Let's say if Umar goes on and becomes champion, is he still this much ahead of someone like Sandhagen? Well, he's not really easy, considering, like, Sandhagen... What, what's Sandhagen rank? I don't have rankings up in front of me here, but uh, he's probably ranked in the top in the top four or five. I can pull him up here. Uh, let's do it. The, the, thankfully, we have the internet with us. He's ranked two. He's ranked two in the division. So even then, even if he goes on, he becomes champion or whatever, Sandhagen is one of the top guys up there, and I think he deserves a little bit of respect. Now, forget about that. We can talk about respect and all that. Respect is no good when we're talking about cold, hard cash. And if I'm coming out here giving you... 
uh, a bet, I better have some backing for it. And I, I think I do, right? So, look, I'll go with the I'll go with the, the quick pop, the easy stuff first. You go back and you watch Umar's last fight against uh, Bezat al um, al Machin, whose name I cannot say. Uh, but I went back and I watched that fight uh, yesterday or today, whenever it was. He got dropped in that fight, you know? And he turned into, obviously, a very good top control wrestler. Now, he doesn't always do that in fights. Look, we can see him wrestle. As we say, we have 14 and a half minutes or maybe a little bit less in that fight of him wrestling. Um, and, you know, we a lot of the time out of him, we see a lot of striking. But then, you know, some uh, submissions after it. Obviously, he's won a lot of fights by submission. I think uh, Umar was one of those guys as well. I think until he got the knockout against uh, Honey Barsolas, a lot of people were kind of saying, you know, he's never, you know, he's only knocked one person out and it happened, you know, a long time ago. He's, you know, he's never going to knock anyone. That's just, that's just the way he's going to be uh, as a fighter, you know. And But, like, without actually watching him, a little bit like Robocop last, last week, well, uh, the, the commentary were like, oh, this guy's a BJJ black belt. And I was like, have you watched these last three or four fights? This guy goes out and strikes in all of his fights. Like, what are you, what, what are you talking about? And, uh, like, Umar's a little bit different now in that he can, you, you know, you... you, you you know, he can do it all. But you, you look at the name and you think, oh, he's going to wrestle. You look at the record. He's a lot of submissions. You think he's going to, you know, fight on the ground. But I actually think he'll be happy to fight Corey on the feet. Now, will he be happy to continually fight Corey on the feet for a full 25 minutes? I would say no. I would say no. I, maybe, though. Like, I, if that happened, would I be completely and utterly shocked? I wouldn't be, right? But I think he will add in takedowns and all that, right? So... Right, but so to go back to just the the, the quick easy point there, the the last fight uh, against uh, Bexad, he did get dropped and he got hit really hard. And Sandhagen, as we you know, we know the Frankie Edgar fight and others, he is a guy that can hit you early and they can hurt you early and hit you with something you're not expecting. I think the biggest issue in Umar's game as well, before I move on to Sandhagen, is I think he's very good at going forward and running the the game, running the fight putting on the pace, using his jab or getting his seconds, whatever it might be. I don't think he's great. No, he's good at, uh, at wrestling in a defensive manner. Let's say if he gets, as in that fight, he got knocked down, he got put to the pit of his collar, and then he wrestles out, he's very good at that. But I don't think he's the best counter striker when under pressure, right? So some people, uh, they want you to push forward against them so they can counter you. I don't think that's necessarily, and it's. I don't think it is uh, Umar's best game. I don't think he's great at that. So if you're Sandhagen, right, what do you do? Well, you go out and you push him backwards. You make him try to, or force him to have to be a counter striker, and you, you know, you attempt to win the fight that way. Um, he just said, none as I said, Umar is really good offensively, and you know, he he loves controlling the fight. Like I think the biggest thing about Umar, forget about the the strike and the wrestling, it's control, control, control with him, and mostly in the striking. Right? We can easily you know talk about control the wrestling, right? But he loves to control the striking. Sandhagen has to take that away away from him. So just to move to Sandhagen, right? And the reason I'm picking him is twofold. I I. And I'm not not that I'm necessarily picking him. I'm picking him at that price. I think he's one dangerous, two has the ability to control, take the control away from fights, and three and I'm at uh, two point five. We'll go here. He has the ability to push guys back and push himself forward that few do in that division. Um, and you know, plus if he is taken down, he's look. It's he's going to struggle. Everyone's going to struggle. But he has submissions and he's good off of his you know good off his back and will you know will sweep and stuff like that but the, the, the third part Trevor Whitman I'm very interested by this now I I have great respect for Trevor Whitman I actually think he's probably the best coach in the history of the sport honestly I think think that much of him I wonder how it'll work for Corey Sandhagen because like I feel like Corey's one of those guys that's almost the exact opposite of a Trevor Whitman fighter now does he need a bit of Trevor Whitman does, will that make him a better fighter? Will that make him control it even more? I'm actually skeptical, right? <laughs> and for someone who's given him as the bed, I, I, you know, maybe I should be less skeptical and bite into it. But if it does go right, and it does help him, I think it'll help him massively, right? I think if he f- fights a more like fainting and jabbing game, and uh, it goes badly for him, it could be a disaster. Could be an absolute disaster. But if he fights that game. 
while it, while being able to push forward and it goes well for him, it it could be a masterclass or could, an absolute masterstroke. It could be. So um, that's the bet. That's the first bet of the week. We're going with Corey Sandhagen at that insane price to me, and it's it's the price more than anything else. Like I I absolutely, you know, if you ask me who I'm picking. As I said, it could be either one of them, but that price of plus two six five, I think it's incredible. I think it's an incredible price, and you have to go for it. So, Corey Sandhagen, first bet of the week plus two six five. Second bet of the week, I am going to stick for the UFC here for a second. Uh, actually, we'll we we'll, you know we go with the first uh, three all the UFC, and then we'll we'll run over to the the, the PFL. Um, I'm going with Davidson Figueredo uh, to win his fight against uh, Marlon Chito Vera, and. Look, I'm going for this basically straight up on who's the better fighter. I think Devison, when he came up, I was a bit skeptical um, about him fighting up the weight class. But what he did against Rob Font, especially, you know, Cody Garbrandt uh, was, you know, a little, little bit different. I think it's a different sort of matchup. But I think his performance against Rob Font was very, very good. And I, I think, like, coming into the, the last couple of fights... I was looking for something off of Figueredo that maybe I shouldn't have been. And what I was looking for was him to rekindle what he used to be. You know, be the, I'm going to put everything out there, I'm going to hit you with these big shots, and I'm going to beat you. And I was, my thing behind that was, like, he's up a weight class now. I know, you know, cardio was an issue. The weight cuts were an issue because of that. Um, but he hasn't. What I think he's done, actually, he has reverted to being a more technical fighter and you know using his better skills against the other people whether it's taking him down and using his wrestling and jiu-jitsu or on the feet and i think against cheeto that is exactly what you need to do you know everyone that beats cheeto kind of does that to them to be, like to be fair like cheeto has lost nine times and it's been nine decisions you know no one's going out there knocking cheeto out literally or submitting him like nobody that's what Corey Sandhagen did to him. That's what Sean O'Malley did to him. You know, Corey took him down, obviously got on top of him with the whole thing. O'Malley just technically beat him. And if you've bits and pieces of both of them for Figueredo, I think that's how he wins the fight. Um, I think he's a pretty good price to like. Uh, it's a weird thing about Cheeto Vera. I, uh, he's a guy I think can be overrated in some parlance and underrated in others. Um, he obviously went on a great run there to to get himself towards the title shot. I know he lost to Sandhagen and then came back with a win and got the title shot. But, like, I'm not sure he's as good as those, you know, fights, those winning uh, run, that run, winning run suggests, you know. Um, and that's a, bit, that's a bit unfair. But when I'm looking, you know, when I'm looking at the bets and when I'm looking at what, who I think is going to beat who, you know, you have to be a bit harsh like that. So, like, can figure it out. So with Cheeto, right? As, what, which fight was it? The I think it was the Font fight, wasn't it? Where he did that thing where he was basically losing large portions around, and he land one big shot. Um, I don't think that's going to work against someone like Figueredo. I I just think he is a little bit too, and especially over three rounds, it's going to be a little bit tougher because he's too fast. You know, as a, as a guy fighting down the weight, if you do that to him as well, he has no problem dipping under and taking you down to absolutely stop that whereas maybe Font will continue to fight you in the feet in that way or maybe doesn't have that side start, side of his game that's going to take that away so with all that said I, I just think Figueredo is a better fighter than him and going to win now look could could this delve into like a very low output close fight I could see that I could see that and then you know you, are you down to is the bigger man going to win but I don't think so because of I, I think it'll be harder for Cheeto to get to Figueredo than for Figueredo to get to Cheeto, if you want to put it that way. So I think he will get to him, and I, it'll probably be a decision, but uh, yeah, I'm picking Figueredo to uh, to win that one. Right, third bet of the week. Um, I I actually flip-flopped massively on, on this bet, and I went from this man to win by decision to now him winning inside the distance, and it's Michael Chiesa against Tony Ferguson. Uh, and it's plus 100 even money. <clears throat> and the reason, well, the reason I had it, first of all, was because of the Paddy Pimda fight a little bit for Tony, you know, where he didn't look as, I know, as bad maybe as he has recently. I don't think Chiesa has looked amazing over the last while. He's 36 years of age now. He feels to me like a guy who's lost three in a row and is kind of wanting to get into the broadcast and more 
than the fighting. You know, it's this time last year, almost to the day since he fought. Before that, it was a year and a half since he fought. So, you know, as I said, this will be his third fight since 2021. It's not, you know, Tony Ferguson in, as we know, you know, in the last dying embers of his career again. But, you know, in his last few fights, he hasn't been, he hasn't been finished early in any of them, like... You know, Paddy went to decision with him. It was the third round against Bobby Green, the fourth round against Nate. It was the second round against Chandler. Decision, decision, fifth round knockout against Gaethje. Like so, he's not just going in there and getting finished easy. So that was that's what I was kind of looking at, right? But what kind of changed here for me was a couple of things. I think, I think especially the kind of the Vicente Luque fight, but to a certain extent the the, uh, the Kevin Holland fight as well uh, for. Um, uh, for uh, Michael Chiesa and even you you know you go back further for him he, look his last three fights in a row are decision wins um, uh, before he, he came over to Carlos Khan it's 2018 since he's got a finish right but the reason I'm going for it is like in all of those fights recently I, I feel like he's taken a chance and what I mean by that is I feel Chiesa is the type of guy at this stage of his career who will go out there and will be unwilling to like jab a guy up or to get on top and just lay on him and win a fight that way. I feel like whatever he does, he'll do it towards getting the finish. Like he'll take massive chances. And I, would you be massively surprised if Ferguson ended up catching him in something? You know, at this stage of his career, you'd have to be. But if the fight goes to the ground, which I think it will, it becomes a more, um, you know, a more, um, how would you put it, an even fight. Um, but it's hard for me to pick Tony Ferguson to win, and I feel like Chiesa will drag him to the ground when he gets inside. I could see Tony landing a few jabs and maybe hurting him or something like that. And Chiesa takes a ta- chance and body locks him. I think Chiesa is stronger and bigger on the ground as well. You must remember that. I know he used to fight at one fifty five, but he's more genuine one seventy pounder than, than Tony Ferguson is. And I think once he gets on top. You know, I think it's going to be tough for Tony not to give up something there. You know, we obviously we've seen Tony submitted in the past before three times. Um, he, you know, Bobby Green even submitted him, which is not a great, uh, not a great sign. You know, especially after what we saw last weekend. But uh, yeah, I just think Yes is going to take that chance to to take it to the ground, and I think he's probably going to finish him there with a with a submission. So, Kiez uh, inside the distance, uh, plus one hundred is bet number three. Right, we'll touch on the rest of the UFC uh, in a second, but the last two bets of the week are from the uh, the PFL. The easiest bet, I think, for me to pick this week, and uh, maybe that's a bit harsh, but Sergio Bilicini at minus 162. Um, obviously, he was fighting in the tournament, had an unbelievable win there, got injured, and he's out of the tournament, but he's back in here as, you know, the, the heavyweights are on this weekend, so I think if... Um, one of the heavyweights gets injured or whatever, he'll be the next guy in line. But he went in there against Belayevinov. And you, you might think, right, you might look on paper and go, oh, Sergio Bilicini against Belayevinov, you know, heavyweight fight. They went t- five, three five-minute rounds. You're thinking, Shani, what are you talking about? But it was a really good fight. Like, literally, what, was it a top 10 fight of the year? I, I would nearly go as far as to say that. It was a very, very good fight. And he performed really, really, really well in that. And, you know, he lost the Tyrell Fortune via disqualification the last time they fought. So he is, you know, he's going to try to make, and it was, you know, there wasn't much to see in that fight. It was only a few minutes. Um, he has a point to prove. He'll want to win that fight. And I suppose the same thing could be said for Fortune, who, you know, was, you know, he's only fought once since that fight, obviously in the regular season. Fought Marcelo Gorm, didn't make it in. And, it, you know, but literally, look, look here. Someone will probably get injured, let's be honest. You know, someone might get injured. With this heavyweights this year, a lot of them been getting injured. This could really be a f- uh, a fight to win you a place in the million uh, in the million tournament. Um, and now that that plays a part in it, but I also think I, I think what plays a part in it is Serge, um, Serge's ability against Fortune to be faster and more technical. Like I think Fortune is is a guy who goes out there. He's probably more technical than he gi- is given credit for. And he's, you know, 34 years of age, he's 6'2", he's, you know, f- big and strong and fast with a lot of knockouts, both a very similar, you know, like, nine knockouts, sorry, eight knockouts for uh, for Fortune, eight knockouts for Bilistini, four decisions for Fortune, four decisions for Bilistini, 
uh, you know, very, very similar records. Both, uh, you know, both have, uh, t- um, they both lost twice in the last couple of years. It's, it's a very even fight, but I just think that speed differential, especially if it turns into, you know, uh, a longer fight, I think uh, Bil- uh, um, uh, Bilostini's cardio is very good as well in the heavyweight division, which we don't always see. His ability to carry uh, his game plan throughout the three rounds is very, very good as well. And I just think overall, like, uh, Fortune is one of those guys that I, I like him, and he's, you know, he's caught some good guys. But I think this might be the level. Like, he's lost to Vassell. He's lost to Tim Johnson. Like, the best win of his career is probably the side Soma, maybe Matt Mitri on one. Um, you know, obviously, go, the goal and win, I suppose, last time I was a pretty good one as well. But, yeah, I think Bilicini is just better all around. And uh, I think he'll win that fight. So, there you go. That price is uh, minus 162. I, honestly, I was expecting it. I was expecting that to be maybe minus 262. So when I saw it, I was like, okay, that's one of my first bets. And the flyer, you can you can ignore me at this point because I always get these wrong. But I'm going for the straight up price of Ginna Bishop at plus 410 as my flyer of the week. And honestly, I think it I think it's a, a pretty good flyer now. If you're to give me a straight up bet who's gonna win between Jenna Bishop and Dakota Dicheva. Well, I've actually picked Ginna Bishop if you listen to my previous show with, with Mike. Um but again, I think it'd be to me fifty-fifty. Went back and I watched just just to make sure because this this is one of the, those bets you you look at and go that price is insane. It's way too big. What's going on here? But then you got right. We, but will she actually win? And I went back and I watched a few of her fights. I watched the um, Ilara Joanna fight, the Elena Callanu fight. She, you know, she went to the split decision with Talia Santos last time out, and the level. Especially in the first two fights I mentioned there, her ability to get the fight to the ground when her opponents are like striking right at her is really, really, really good. And that's how she look. That's how she's going to win this fight. Let's be honest here. She's thirty eight years of age. She's five foot four. You know, she's older and smaller and less experienced. And uh, you know, all of that. It's all going against her here. And I suppose that's why she's the price she she is. But I'll tell you what, Jenna Bishop is a good fighter. And she, you know, she only made her debut in 2021. She made her belt her debut in 2023. She made her PFL debut in 2024. And it's it's been a whirlwind for her. And she's one of those fighters where, you know, you look at her and you, she's she's primed to play a spoiler. I, I, like, she just is. Now, the chair at the other side of it, look, she's one of the best prospects in the sport. There's no doubt about it. Her... Her striking is brilliant. Her jab, her use of size is all absolutely fantastic, right? And again, will, will she win the fight? She very well could. I wouldn't at all be surprised uh, if if I heard. I, I'm at Ian O'Neill's wedding this weekend, so I won't be able to watch it live. But if I woke up tonight and I'm, go, I'm going to be doing my um, my uh, post fight on, on Monday or Tuesday anyway, so tune in for that. But when I come on a Monday and, or Tuesday evening and I, I go and watch those fights, would I be at all surprised? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. You know, but I also wouldn't be surprised if Jenna Bishop won. And that's a weird thing to say about someone who's plus 410. I think that price is way too much. I understand with the, the Cheva, what she's done in her career and all the hype around her and all. If she was, you know, plus 200, plus 250 with Jenna Bishop, absolutely could understand it. The Cheva's done enough to garner or warrant being favoured. But I don't think plus four ten. I I know she's not plus plus four ten everywhere, but she is around plus three seven five other places. I think that is a crazy big price. And Ginny Bishop's wrestling is very very good. If at first she gets in and Dicheva spoils her work, takes her down, I'll tell you what that plus four ten is looking very 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 good. So we'll uh, we'll go for there. Right. Okay. Let's. Uh, Let's look at some of these uh, UFC prices. Um, right, so we, we'll start off with the main event. Corey Sandhagen, Umar Nurmagomedov. The straight up price, as we talked about, plus 265 for, for Corey. Um, and minus 300 best price for um, uh, for your boy, Umar Nurmagomedov. Um, the co main event. And I, actually, we'll look at a, a couple of the prop bets if they're, uh, they're up here. I'd look through a few of these. I feel like the fight... You know, and the the bookies agreed to go to the decision. 
best price minus 120 uh, I, th- I i feel like it probably will who will get the finish on who let's let's have a look at that if there is one sandhagen knockout plus 550 umar knockout plus 650 sandhagen submission plus 1600 plus 275 so, you know sandhagen submission <laughs> that's very very like if you want a big 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 flyer i don't think that's necessarily bad so let's uh yeah we can have a look at that and uh, the core main event you know shara bullet it was good, I suppose, in his last fight, but a lot of people said to me after Ashani, is he as good as they're making out? Um, and, that, you know, I'm not sure, to be honest. I'm I'm still, I think the jury's still out now. Will he beat Michelle or the Shechuk? I think he probably will. He's minus 238, a good price. I think it's probably not bad. Uh, we obviously talked about Davidson against Verak. We talked about Chiesa against Ferguson, although the straight-up price in that best price, minus 520 for Chiesa, plus 475 for Ferguson. That, that's That's pretty big, like, to be honest. Ferguson flyer at that after what we talked about earlier on like yes it's not exactly a spring chicken either he's not exactly at the top part of his career I wouldn't be massively surprised if Ferguson won it but there you go uh one of my bets was going to be Mackenzie Dern but I've kind of backed out of it I do I just think she's a better fighter than Lupi I like her at that price uh Minifield um Morzanov again I love picking Minifield as an underdog and I'm often wrong and when I pick against him I'm wrong as well so is, you know, plus 180 big enough, minus t- 205. I, I, you know what? I probably lean to plus 180. I, le- I lean with Minifield there. Um, uh, Fernandez is a big favorite. Mays is the underdog against Gaziev. Yeah, I think Gaziev probably will win that. Here's a fight I want to quickly talk about. Gordon Kuta Taladze against Jordan Vucinic. Vucinic coming over from Cage Warriors against Kuta Taladze. Short notice, only seven or eight days notice, whatever it might be. I'll tell you what, I went back and I watched a bit of Kuta Talalze and I'll, t- I'll tell you what, if Jordan Vucinic had a full camp for this and he was fully prepared, I, I would be biting on that plus 180. I would be biting on that plus 180. Jordan Vucinic has good wrestling as well as very solid striking. I just worry if this fight goes two, you know, a round and a half, two and a half rounds, three rounds, that Vucinic could falter a little bit. Um... I, I'll tell you one another thing. I would not touch the minus 210 on Kuta Taladze. Vucinic is a live dog in that one. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Um, Sam Hughes and, and uh, Victoria. Victoria is the favourite there, and I think rightly so. I like Jai Herbert as well as the favourite uh, in that one. And uh, Dennis Tulanan as well. I'll be picking him over uh, Duma. Can we find the PFL? We can indeed. Um, so Linda Vassell and Popov, we gave the pricks for this, myself and Mike. Uh, I went for uh, Popov. I think he went for Linton, to, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Linton is best price, plus 225. Popov, minus 250. But again, Linton is one of those guys, when he turns up, he can shock the world. He absolutely can. But uh, I, yeah, do you know what? I don't think it's the worst price in Popov, to be honest. Uh, I think he'll win that. Uh, you know, Karamush is a big underdog. I think after her last performance, she has to be... Um, I believe this price has swung pretty pretty comprehensively. So it was that off minus two seven five went all the way to minus two two seven. Yeah, so when I looked at it last week it was minus two twenty ish. Um and it's into minus two eight five now. So there's been a big, big swing there um towards Anders and I think correctly. I, I think she will win that fight. And then we talked about the Villasini fight. Um uh with someone on the undercard uh, Pergande is a massive favorite. I like Sergio Cosio. That price minus two two five in an ACA or something like that. I like Cody Law as well. But look at the, the deviation of prices minus nine fifty in some places is a bit much. Uh, but I think there's one or two more PFL fights here. Let's just quickly have a look at them. Indeed, uh, here's the Golsov Johnson fight. Golsov, actually, I, I, do you know what? minus four twenty? I think he should be a bigger favorite than that. If I'll be honest, again, if you can throw it into an ACA, it might be good. Um, and in Dicheva. Way too big for me. That plus four ten, and in that one, let's uh, let, let's have a bite in that. Let's let's have a bite in that. So there you go. That's the betting show for the week. To recap, Corey Sandhagen, the price. This is a price bet. Don't worry about anything else. This is a price bet. Plus two six five, minus one thirty five for Figueiredo, the former champ. Plus one hundred for Chiesa inside the distance. Then Sergio Bilasini at minus one six two to win his fight over in PFL. And Gina Bishop, the flyer of the week. Plus 4-10. If Man City can be taken down by Man United, then Gina Bishop can take down Man City fan Dakota Dichima. So we'll see how it goes. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Sean Sheehan for Sherdog.com, and I'll see you all next time.